We're up here on the blue at the annual Lion Hunters Rendezvous, and we've decided that we're going to continue to do this on an annual basis. And uh, we've decided because this is Clell Lee, uh, Clell Lee's home range, kind of is what we'll call it, kind of like the home range a lion has. We're going to start to call this the Clell Lee Memorial Lion Hunters Rendezvous. And uh, Justin Marks, who was one of the, or probably the last professional guide that hunted directly with Clell Lee professionally is going to read a story that Clell wrote and Justin you go ahead and introduce a little bit about what that magazine this magazine is pretty old it's called the Canadian Trail Hound <clears throat> this was the March and April issue of 1973 wow. and uh, the article is titled Fair Trouble on the Blue by Clell Lee almost every spring we have trouble with bear on the Blue River. They take a good number of our calves, and last spring, 1972, was no exception. In early May, we began to find calves killed and eaten up, mostly by a large bear. Most of the times, we arrived at the kills, and it was a matter of being too late to run him. But when starting to ride our upper pasture, which is about two miles above our ranch, which is located seven miles below Blue, Arizona, the post office on Blue River. We found a calf killed by a bear, and he had not had a chance to eat this calf. Something scared him away. Well, we figured we'd come back and keep a close watch on this carcass. In the meantime, we had a cow bogged down in a mud hole way up Grant Creek. We got her out of the mud and made a small corral to feed her in. Her small calf stayed nearby, but the bear soon got him. One day an employee of ours, Jesus Reese, rode down the trail to the pen and saw a medium-sized bear eating the cow's tail clear up to her, the body. While he was pulling and jerking on it, she was bawling and trying to get up. Well, the next day Jesus and I decided to take the hounds and try for this bear. We had a pack of ten hounds, Battler, a large blue tick, Cougar, a veteran blue tick, of a hundred bear kills, Betty, a registered blue tick female with a lot of courage, Barry and Bobby, both registered English, and some young hounds I will not name. All the hounds were good after bear. Jesus and I saddled our horses real early and turned the hounds loose. It was a ride of ten miles to the cow the bear had attacked. We had just gone through the Grant <coughs> Creek Gate which is not over 400 yards from the ranch, when the hounds winded and ran over to the dead calf. Well, I expected the calf to be eaten up, but it had not been touched. However, Mr. Bruin's tracks were plain in the dust. The hounds all opened up on the trail, and we went fast up Grant Creek for a half a mile, made a lose for a few minutes, and Jesus and I caught up with them. They were milling, they were milling around trying to find the track. All of a sudden, Battler's deep voice rang out and echoed along the canyon walls. The other hounds ran to him, honoring his lead, and the chase was on again. We led out to the top of Grant Mesa. It led out to the top of Grant Mesa. We hurried to keep in hearing. When we topped out on the mesa, we could hear the hounds turning down into our holding pastures. Mingled with cries of the hounds was the lowing of a cow in distress. For her calf. Well, I mark, I remarked to Jesus, Well, there's another calf we can mark off of our number. For the bear had decided to eat a fresh one last night. She kept up her, <coughs> she kept up her continued lowing. The hounds made a lose for a while in the brushy basin where the cow was bawling for her calf. I looked at the cow and saw she had a big bag that had not been sucked that morning and that she was one of that we had put in the pasture a couple of days before with a nice big heifer calf. We started riding and looking and soon in a small draw there lay the calf freshly killed and about half eaten up during the past night. The hounds were circling in every way badly confused as the bear had made a lot of tracks near the kill. In a few minutes Bobby opened up <coughs> up the canyon and in the direction from which they had come. At first I thought they might be turning around backward, but, at, but 
the other hounds joined him and the chase was warm. We had to pull our hats down and ride as fast as this rough country would permit and at a fast pace as the horses would stand on a long race. The bear headed for the river and behind Mr. Kilgore's house the hounds went almost through the yard. The chase led us up toward Bear Mountain up Sawmill Canyon. Before we reached the head of the sawmill <coughs> our horses were winded and we lost hearing of the hounds. We rode on in the direction we last heard them and finally came to the rim of Sweetie Canyon that heads on Bear Mountain. Finally we could hear the faint cries of the hounds and they were heading for Sweetie but seemed to be circling our way. Now the country they were in is real rugged and impossible for the horses to go into. I told Jesus to try to get to the hounds on foot. He was eager and ready. I thought I would take the horses on a long distance and try to get with him on the top. He and I separated and as I traveled along under the big rim the hounds bane seemed to be coming my way. It sounded like they would cross a spring canyon about a half a mile above me. Well this is foot country too so I thought by leaving the horses maybe I could head the bear off and get a shot. And it was a certainty that this one was not going to tree. I could hear the hounds fighting him. I had made, <coughs> I had to make this half a mile straight up before the hounds came by. I just had to kill this stock killer as he was costing our ranch as well as our neighbors a lot of money. Well, I went as fast as I could, and I could hear the hounds stop for a few minutes in one place, indicating they were stopping him pretty regularly and were coming just right. If only I could get high enough to get a shot. But on they came and, as, and soon I could tell they were directly above me and I was not going to make it in time. But I kept climbing. I heard the chase go by not more than a hundred yards above me. Well, I was almost exhausted but I kept on and came to the tracks of the bear and the hounds and could hear them fighting not more than two hundred yards around the mountain. But on a level with me. I could make <clears throat> a little better time here as I was on the level. I hurried and ran, falling now and then, and I was so exhausted. Finally I could see the hounds, and I saw the bear charge the hounds, and he turned back and was coming my way. <clears throat> Not more than fifty yards away he passed. He paused for a second and was inside of me. He was facing me, but had never seen me. I raised my 300 Savage pulled for his chest and the crack of the rifle <coughs> at the crack of the rifle he joined the calf that he had killed. He rolled over amongst the hounds with his heart torn out. The killer was dead. I had revenge for all the calves he had killed. Jesus soon arrived with a big smile on his face. We left the bear resting in peace on Bear Mountain as the law does not allow taking the hide or carcass of a stock killer. This ended our hunt, but we were relieved of one more stock killer. Well, <laughs> great story. That was great. And, you know, I didn't even know I had this book with me. I brought some stuff to give to my brother. And we took it out there, and I said, well, opened up this old metal box. I said, I want the box back, by the way, Billy. <laughs> well, I started digging through it. And out this book comes. That's great. <laughs> That's good. That's good.